Great. Thank you, Paul and Betsy. And thanks again to APH. Thank you guys for having me here. These are always a lot of fun. So let's talk about first what we're going to cover today. So I know, Paul, you covered some of these things. And we're going to talk about learning some of the differences between basic HTML view and standard view. Switching to standard view and turning on those Gmail keyboard commands that are really important. Navigate labels, which are folders. That's what Google calls folders. They call them labels. Compose and send messages. Open, read, and reply to messages. And then finally, archive, delete, and search for messages. So we got quite a few, few things to cover. And there are a lot of tasks as well that I'm going to be demonstrating throughout this. So I'm going to start, though, by telling you the differences between basic HTML view and standard view. Basic HTML view is available for browsers that are older that don't support standard view. That's really the purpose of basic HTML view. It also used to historically be the, the more accessible option. And you navigate it just like you would a web page. And it's, it's simpler. It's a simpler interface. It's easy to use, but it doesn't give you all the features and all the access to things that standard view does. And Google has created these great keyboard commands that we can use in, in standard view. So standard view allows you to access all the Google apps. For example, you can, and I'll, I'll demonstrate this in a few minutes, you can go to Google Docs, Google Sheets, Calendar, all those other apps. You can't do that in basic. You can navigate using those keyboard commands. Like I said, those are really, really handy. And they're very, very quick for navigating to different labels, to different areas, and replying to messages and things like that. Very, very quick. Also, the standard view interface is very similar to that of other Google Workspace applications. Now, it's not just like it, but in the sense that when you're using JAWS, you're going to turn the virtual PC cursor on for some things, turn it off for other things. And I'm going to go over that here in just a second and show you a little bit about that, explain why that's important. Because I think one of the most important things about learning how to use uh, Gmail and standard view is knowing when to turn that on and when to turn it off. Basic, like I said, basic HTML view is used for older browsers. And I, I encourage anyone who's using basic HTML, it, like I said, it, it's easier to use in some aspects, but it is also a much simpler interface. Um, you know, you can navigate it using those JAWS quick navigation keys, for example, X to uh, navigate to checkboxes and H for headings and things like that. But you also don't have access to those Google keyboard commands that I keep mentioning. Also, Standard View provides access to the complete range of Gmail features, while it, basic HTML does not. So, for example, in Standard View, you'll have access to things like uh, spell check, Google Tasks, Google Chat, and, and I'll show you some of those things as well. All right, so moving on to switching to standard view and turning on those Gmail keyboard commands. I'm going to go ahead and talk about this for just a second, then I'm going to share my screen. So by default, standard view is selected. If you happen to be using an older browser that doesn't support it, then basic HTML view will be selected by default, but that's probably not going to happen very often. So by default, standard view is selected. So when you create your Gmail account or when you log in, you won't have to um, you know, select that. But I'm going to show you how anyway. Because if you use basic HTML view, um, you can actually set basic HTML to be your default view. So if you've done that and you want to go back to standard view, then you, you know, you'll, I'm going to show you how to do that. All right. So Let's go ahead. I'm going to share my screen and then show you how to set it to base or standard view and then also how to go ahead and turn on those Google keyboard commands because you have to do that in settings. Um, 
All right, I'm going to share my JAWS here so you can hear this. Meeting control. All right, look at start screen share. Inbox six strainers tenant. All right, can you guys see that, hear that? Main read. Yes, we've got a good okay. visual and a uh, good sound level. Okay, good. And you can see the whole screen in, in Gmail. Yes, and I'm going to turn off chat while you are uh, screen sharing, and okay. I'll turn it back on once we get to the PowerPoint. All right, great. Thank you. Okay, so I am in my inbox here, and a couple of different ways you can tell what view that you are in. So if, if I go to the top with control home. Inbox six strainers 10 at gmail.com. So if you hear it say inbox and mine said inbox six, it's telling me how many unread messages I have, but you'll hear it say inbox and then your Gmail username or your, your email address. That lets you know that you are in standard view. Now, if I down arrow. Basic HTML view button. We have the basic HTML view button. So that's another indicator that you're in standard view, not basic HTML. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch to basic HTML for a second. Space, basic HTML view button, G account. All right. So now if I go to the top of the page, I just pressed space on that, by the way. Now, if I go to the top with control home, Gmail inbox, it just says Gmail inbox. So if you log into your account and you hear it say Gmail inbox, um, then that will let you also know that you are in basic HTML link search. And if I press down arrow, it says search. All right. So if you're in basic HTML, how do you get back to standard view? We're going to use a JAWS keyboard command. That's going to list the links on this page. And it's, it's it'll list the links on any page, but insert F7 links, list dialog links, list view search. So here we are in a list of links. I can press the letter S settings, sign out, switch to standard view. 13 of 44. And it said switch to standard view, press enter. Enter. Gmail, Gmail. And, and another main region. Well, escape. Okay. So what happened there, and I'm going to talk you about this now. here in just a second, but I can also do insert T. Title is inbox six strainers 10 at gmail.com. And that's a JAWS command that reads the window title. So that let me know once again, it read the it said inbox and told me what my username was all right so let's talk about virtual pc cursor here for just a second before we turn on those keyboard commands for google for gmail so when you're in a document like a word document you know and you're navigating around and you you type something you know you can see that system cursor you can see it moving you have an insertion point well you don't have that on web pages but the virtual PC cursor in JAWS allows you to read web pages like you would a document. So typically, when we're on a web page, we have it turned on, and it usually turns on by default, although you can set that to not do that. But typically, it, we turn it on by default. Now, it is possible to do a lot of things in Gmail and standard view with JAWS by leaving the virtual PC cursor on. But I think for a lot of these tasks, number one, a lot of them are just easier to perform using these keyboard commands and turning the virtual PC cursor off because that also gives you kind of the same experience you would have in other email providers like Outlook. It's not the same exactly, but it's very similar. It also kind of gets you used to that concept of when do you turn the virtual PC cursor on and when do you turn it off? which is something that you'll deal with in the Google application, the workspace applications like Docs and Sheets. So when do you turn it on and when do you turn it off? Well, if I'm gonna navigate the page, which I'm gonna do here in a second. Inbox. Um, if I'm gonna navigate the page and do, and do things that aren't necessarily related to email, then I'll turn it on and I'll navigate the page like I normally would. If I'm going to navigate my messages and go to different labels, which are folders here in Gmail, and I'm going to compose messages and reply to messages, I'm going to turn it off. It's just easier to do. And in that way, you're using the PC cursor. So when you're composing a message, for example, you get that insertion point, you get that cursor. If I'm going to read a message, I'm going to turn it on because that message is displayed like a web page. It's it's on a web page, so it's it's displayed as part of the web page. So 
on if you're going to navigate the page in items that aren't in Gmail necessarily, on if you're going to read a message, off if you're navigating through folders, labels, or if you're composing or replying to messages, navigating through messages. And like I said, there are always, you know, multiple ways of doing things. So you guys may have your own way of doing it as well. And that's fine. I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to be demonstrating mostly with it off. Okay, so just a quick overview of what we have here. If I press down arrow, I'm at the top of this page, uh, this inbox, this page here with my inbox. Basic HTML view button. All right, I don't want to press that. Visited links, collapsed visited link using Gmail with screen readers. All right, so this said collapsed, it said visited link because I've been here before using Gmail with screen readers. So if you press space, it's going to expand that. Space, keyboard shortcuts. And then you have some options here you can learn about keyboard shortcuts. New Gmail standard view guide. And a Gmail standard view guide. And if you're new to this, I would highly recommend going through that because it, Google has put together some great information about screen readers in general. And this, this all applies to using these keyboard commands that we're gonna be doing today. And it will help you uh, when you're using it with JAWS. Now, if I want to collapse that, visited expanded visited link using Gmail with screen readers. So it said expanded, I can press space. Space, using Gmail with screen readers collapsed link. And there we go, it collapsed that. There's one other thing I want to show you before we turn on these keyboard commands. Main menu, visited same page link, G heading level two search. Search mail, escape. I'm down arrowing by the way, there's you know other ways to get to this stuff. Uh, let me press the letter B. Advanced search options, support button, settings button, Google Apps button collapsed. Okay, I happen to know that was a button, by the way. If I down arrow to it, I would have heard it say button, so I would have known that. So it said Google App button collapsed, the Google Apps. All right, so if I press space to expand this. Space, list, with. Now we have a list of Google Apps. Basic HTML inbox. Ah, and it took me to the top of the page. Inbox. So it took me to the top of the page, but I can press B. Basic HDM main menu button, advanced search option, support button, settings button, Google Apps button expanded. And it said Google Apps button expanded. Now I can press down arrow. Google account, F list of sit link account, link search, link maps, link YouTube, link play, link news. And here we have all of all these apps. Link Gmail, link meet, link chat, visited same page, link sent, same page, more button. And, you know, here you also have docs, sheets, and all these other things as well. Say visited. So I'm going to press shift B. Compose button. Actually, I'm going to go back to the top of the page. In B is one of those quick nav keys, by the way, that allows you to navigate a web page. So when the virtual PC cursor is on and you press a letter, it's going to perform a task. So B takes you through the buttons on the page. When the virtual PC cursor is turned off and you're using the PC cursor, then you don't have those quick nav keys. So I just wanted to specify that. All right, so let, let me go collapse this with the letter B. Basic eight main menu, advanced search options, support button menu, settings button, Google Apps button expanded. And I'm going to press space. Space, Google Apps button collapsed. And there we go. You don't have to collapse that, but sometimes it's just easier to get some of that stuff out of the way. All right, turning on these Google keyboard commands, we have to go into settings to do that. So let's go back to the top of the page. Inbox six strainers 10 at gmail.com. And I'm going to press B until JAWS, we hear settings, until we locate settings. Basic HTML view button, main menu button, advanced search options button, support button menu, settings button. All right, settings button. So I'm going to press space to activate this. Space, settings button. And I'm going to press down arrow because we need to find see all settings. Close button, see all settings button. And I'll press space again. Space, see all settings button. General. T all right. Vert so I'm going to go back to the top of the page. Settings strainers. And we have a lot of settings here, but I know what we want to find. We want to find keyboard commands. So I'm going to press Control F as in Frank. Virtual find. And that brings up the virtual find, which allows us to search for a word or phrase. And I'll type in keyboard. And I have JAWS set to read by word, not by character. So I'm going to press enter here. Keyboard, enter, general tab. All right, if you hear that little popping noise, if you're not familiar with what forms mode, is forms mode is what allows you to type in edit boxes and fill out forms on the internet. And it's a JAWS feature when you are in forms mode, your PC cursor is on so that you can type. And so uh, mine, it, it, when it sees a, a field, it activates it 
depending on how you have your forms mode set. So I just wanted you to know what that was. Green keyboard shortcuts. All right, so here we have keyboard shortcuts. And if I press down arrow, link learn more about keyboard shortcuts. You could press enter there to go to a page to learn more about those. Keyboard shortcuts off radio button not checked. One of one. So here we have a button, a, you know, we can check this radio button to turn them off. Keyboard shortcuts on radio button checked. And this is actually on. So if I wanted them off. Keyboard shortcuts off. I pressed up arrow. Space, main region, column to. And that turns it off. Link keyboard shortcuts off radio button checked. But I want them on, so I'm going to go down, down arrow. Keyboard shortcuts on radio button not checked. Space, keyboard shortcuts on radio button checked. And there we go. And from here, you can press the letter B to save your settings, or you can press Control F for find. Virtual find. And you can press, you can type save and press enter. Save, enter, save changes button unavailable. Now, the reason it's saying that this is unavailable is because I really didn't change anything. I mean, I did check the off box and then I checked the on box again, but it doesn't consider that an actual change. But if I had, if it had been off and I turned it on, then this would be a button that would show up as available. Cancel button. So I'm going to down arrow to cancel and hit enter. But if you, if these were previously off, which if you've not turned them on, they will be off by default. You go turn them on and you go to save changes. Enter. Table. And when you press enter, Virtu you are back in your inbox. So I'm going to stop here and see if you guys have any questions. I know that I just threw a lot of information at you. Just know a couple of things. Number one, the, these all these steps are in the handout. And number two, if you need more information about navigating the internet with JAWS, you can go to our training page, which I'll tell you about a little bit later, but you can find it at freedomscientific.com slash training, and you can look for surfs up. And that's our tutorial on navigating the internet with JAWS. Gmail and JAWS in standard so view meeting I'm, starts G inbox meeting controls. Alt S. I'm going to stop sharing here so that we can ask questions if you guys have any right now. All right, so I opened up the chat and we have okay. the first question about where the handouts are stored. We keep them on our APH website under Access Academy. I'm going to post that again for the group. Uh, you'll find emailing it in. Uh, always search by the title of the webinar to find that handout, but it's a great repository. You can always look back and find previous handouts from our content. Um, and we do have a question about opening code. I'm going to type that in the chat for those of you who missed it. Um, but if there are any questions so far about using Gmail uh, in either standard or HTML view, please let us know. All right. I'm not seeing any okay. questions come in. So let's, right. let's continue on. All right. Let's talk a little bit about these labels that I keep mentioning. So like I said, um, the email folders in Gmail are called labels. So that can be a little confusing if you're navigating through your Gmail and you think, well, what is this? I don't know what a label is. So that's what it is. It's a, it's a folder. So you can use those Gmail keyboard commands to navigate to the different folders or the different labels. Let's call them labels from here on out. And when you're in a particular label, then you have messages. You can use your up and down arrow keys just like you would in you know, Outlook or any other email client to navigate through the messages there. And once again, that virtual PC cursor is going to be turned off because we're going to be navigating to folders using keyboard commands. And I'm going to demonstrate this. But for example, these are like two key presses, but they're not at the same time. So you're going to press the letter G. Then right after that, you're going to press I for inbox. You can press G, then T for sent mail. You can press G, then A for all mail. I'll be talking about that a little bit as well. And then you can press G and L for a list of labels. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen if I get in the right window here. All right, I'll stop share. Okay. And we did have Elizabeth one question oh, come sure. in. How okay. do I put off virtual PC 
off or on. Oh, that's really important. And I am so sorry. I forgot to mention that. Yes, it's a toggle, which means you use the same command to turn it off as you do to turn it on. And that is insert and the letter Z, Zulu. Insert Z toggles it off, insert Z toggles it back on. Sorry about that. All right, so I'm gonna share. Oh, and I wanna show you one other thing about keyboard commands and I'll do that here in just a second as well. And let's see, let's make sure we... Meeting control. All right, so let's... Microsoft Word, doc, Gmail and JAWS in standard U. All right, let's see. Meeting con inbox six there we go. strainers. Okay, are we, can you guys see and hear that? Yes, we've got your Gmail screen back up. Okay, good. All right. Okay, so I am going to press insert Z. Use virtual PC cursor off. And that turned it off. And like I said, you do the same thing to turn it on. So you're going to do insert Z if you want to turn it on. Use virtual PC cursor on. But we're going to turn it off. Use virtual PC cursor off. So these commands here for labels are extremely convenient. This is one of my favorite features of Gmail and Standard View because you can use them from anywhere. And it's kind of one of those resetting points. Like if you're not quite sure, you want to get back to the inbox really quickly and you think, where am I? Or you know, you're navigating through a lot of stuff, you can press G, then I. And that gets you to your inbox, which I think I'm already in. If you do G, then T. Main region, grid, unread, T. All right, so it didn't necessarily announce where I am, but if I press insert T, Tango, that reads the window title. Title is sent mail strainers 10 at gmail.com. And that places me in the sent mail label. So now I can use my up and down arrow keys to navigate. I may only have one email. Uh, well, we'll fix that here in just a minute. All right. So if I want to do G followed by I to go to inbox. Main region, primary tab panel. All right. I can press insert T again. Title is inbox six strainers 10 at gmail.com. All right. Now let's try the up and down arrow keys. Unread Elizabeth Whitaker. Yeah, I think that was the problem. I only had one sent message. So if you only have one item in a folder, when you up and down arrow, because it has nowhere else to go, there's no other item for the, the PC cursor to go to, you'll be on that item. And I'll show you a keyboard command you can use to get JAWS to read that to you. But we can just down arrow. Unread, Elizabeth Whitaker, FW, save on a Mac or iPad for college. Unread, Elizabeth Whitaker, FW, NFB 21 film screening with Q&A for straight off the canvas, 1047 AM. And here we, you know, hear the regular things that you would hear if you were just, you know, for example, in Outlook using your arrow keys. I keep going back to Outlook, but it's one of the most commonly used email client, desktop clients. And so they've set this up very similar to that. And again, if I want to go to sent items, GT. Main region, grid, unread, two, Uitaker two, test, 8.30 a.m. And it just announced that. GT. Uh, it said that. I don't know why it just said that. Anyway. All right. So it just announced that one message. And if I press insert up arrow. Unread, two, Uitaker two. And if I press insert up arrow, it's going to read the current line. That is a JAWS command. That is not a, a Google command. So that's a JAWS command. Insert up arrow reads the current line. And because there are no other messages here, if I up or down arrow, it doesn't have anywhere to go. Uh, like I said, G then A for all mail. Main region. And I can do insert T. Title is all mail strainers 10 at gmail.com. And we're going to talk about all mail here in just a bit. I can press G then L to go to the labels list. Banner region, search region, search mail edit combo. And here I can search for a particular label. For example, I could type in trash or I can down arrow. Label, start, two of seven. Label, snoozed, three of seven. Label, important one, four of seven. Label, chats, five of seven. Label, sent mail one, six of seven. And you notice right there it said sent mail one. That's telling me how many messages are in that label. Label, scheduled, seven of seven. Let's go back up here and see if we have... Label, inbox six, one of seven. And it said inbox six. So there are six messages there in the inbox. So if you hear a number after something, it's telling you the number of messages in that particular label. Let's press G then I. The I, search mail edit has pop up, label, G. Uh, Escape, 
All escape. right, I pressed escape because it was wanting to search. Main now region. I can press G then I and I'm back in the inbox. And like I said, just use your up and down arrow keys to navigate. Now, if you want to know keyboard commands, this is something I meant to show you a minute ago. If you want a list of those keyboard commands that we just turned on with the virtual PC cursor off here, you can type question mark. G alert, keyboard shortcuts. And you heard it say alert, keyboard shortcuts. Now, these are in tables. So in order to navigate them, we're going to turn the virtual PC cursor on because we're reading web content. So I'm going to insert Z. Use virtual PC cursor on. And from here, I can use my down arrow key. Table with two columns and 21 rows nesting level one. And you can press the letter T to navigate through the different tables. Column header. Compose and chat. So these keyboard commands are for compose and chat. I can press T again to go to the next table. Table with zero columns, table end, table end, table end. Ah, let's go back to the top of it, the page and then press T. Grid with eight columns, unread, Elizabeth Whitaker. Table with two compose and chat. Shift focus main window, ESC. All right, so here if I down arrow. Focus main window, ESC. Focus latest chatter compose, control plus. Advance to next chatter compose. So you just down arrow and then you'll hear. Control plus. Advance to pre control plus enter. And it says control enter. Send column header, column header. That's sending a message. Now, if you want to read these, you can read these using your table commands. You could turn on the table layer, which is insert space followed by T, or you could press alt control and your right and left arrow keys to navigate through columns or up and down for rows. Control. For example, I'll hold down alt and control. Compose and check control plus enter and column one. That's column one. It says control enter. That's the keyboard command. Press right arrow. Compose and chat Google workspace side panel. Send Co control plus enter. Column one. Compose and chat Google Con beginning of row. Compose and chat Google Con blank row control plus shift. Send column header control plus enter. Okay, that's not working quite like I think it's supposed to. Let's try on the table layer. Space. Insert space T. Table layer. Now if I read T control plus enter row seven. Blank. Control plus shift. All right, I'm going to turn that off escape. So this table is not laid out in such a way that that is working, but do know that send column header control plus enter. If the control enter is the keyboard command and then right beneath that send column header, that's the command to send. So that's also a very familiar command if you use Outlook once again. So some of these commands are going to be familiar if you've used the Office 365 applications. Control plus shift plus C. So control shift C. Add CC recipients. That adds the CC field to an email when you compose. So these are just the keyboard commands. You can look at them. Table with two columns and 32 rows. I pressed T, which moved me to the next table. Formatting column header. So these are commands for formatting. Table with two columns and 36 rows. Jumping. And this is for jumping. And what they mean by that is, for example, G then I. G then I. Go to inbox. Go to inbox. So it's a, th these are the ones where you're going to jump to different labels so and different areas. And so that's what these keyboard commands are. Table with two columns and 34 rows. Actions. And these are actions. Colon. Move focus to toolbar. So again, there's just a lot of different commands in here. And it's a great place to go, especially if there's commands that you don't use very often. You know, it's I don't know if you're like me. I remember the ones I use frequently, but not the ones that I don't use frequently. All right, but let's get out of this. We can press escape. Escape, table. And let's turn that virtual PC cursor off again with insert Z. Use virtual PC cursor off. All right, so now let's see if you guys have any more questions. G meeting control, Me alt S. All right, the chat is open, so we'll see if any questions come in for Elizabeth. Uh, Tanya asks, what was the help command again? That is question mark. Question mark. Uh -huh. So you turn that, you make sure that virtual PC cursor is off. Insert, insert Z turns it on and off. And then you press question mark, and that brings up the list of keyboard commands. Turn your virtual PC cursor on. And then you can, um, sorry, I was hearing some of these other questions that are coming in. 
So you turn off the virtual PC cursor, press a question mark, turn it on to read those commands. And then when you're finished reading the commands, you press escape and then you can turn it off again. Thank you. Well, as you know, we got a number of questions coming yeah. in. Uh, do you have to turn on screen reader support in Gmail like in G Suite? You do not. However, um, you know, if you if you have it on for G Suite, then um, I don't but I don't think you don't need it. I think that's where these keyboard commands come in. Um, let me verify while while we're answering these questions. Let me verify something here. I don't want to tell you the wrong thing, but I don't believe that's listed in the actual settings. So I'm just going to go to settings and see real quick. I don't think so. No. No. So no, you do not. But you do want to turn on those keyboard commands if you plan on using those, you know, to navigate Gmail. All right. Uh, next question that came in, when working with a reply, how do I activate the subject to edit? That is an excellent question. And I am going to show you that here in just a couple of minutes. Great. Um, the next question was, is there a way to shorten the virtual mode prompt? I find it to be very long. Alternatively, can you replace the prompt with a sound? You can go in and yeah, you can go into your settings center and look for that if you are. Um, so if you're on in your inbox, you can always do uh, insert and six on the number row. And that brings up your settings center. And then if you type in virtual PC or virtual PC cursor or just virtual uh, virtual PC, then you can go in and you have you down arrow and you have some settings that says use virtual PC cursor checked. Um, and you can go in there and, and change. I know there is a setting that allows you to, it, it'll say on or off um, so that you don't have to hear quite as much information. Um, so yeah, try try your settings center and see what you can find there. And that's once again, that's insert six on the number row. All right, well, we've got a few more questions. Do we have time to answer maybe three more questions sure. uh, before we move on? Yeah. All right, can you review how to turn keyboard shortcuts on? When I got to settings, I found several tabs and got lost. Sure, so if you are in your inbox, you're going to have your virtual PC cursor turned on, insert Z if it's not already. And you're going to go to settings, which I like to go to the top of the page and press B until I get to the settings button. And then you space and then you down arrow to see all settings and you space again. And then you you can locate this on the page. The find command is a really quick way. If you press control F as in Frank, then you can type in keyboard and press enter and it'll take you to that setting for keyboard shortcuts. And you have two radio buttons there and you can, it'll say, you know, off radio button checked or on radio button not checked. And if on is not checked, you just space to turn it on. And then you press B until you get to save changes and enter and they will stay on. So if you log out and log back in, they'll stay on. Uh, someone shared, the biggest challenge I have when teaching a student is helping them to know when to use visual cursor and when not to. Any advice to help them learn? That's, yeah, and that's a tough one to um, usually, okay, think of, think of the virtual PC cursor this way. So you have the PC cursor, which is your insertion cursor, right? That's your system cursor that you can actually see moving. When you're on a web page, you can uh, you have the virtual PC cursor, which you cannot see, but it's there to enable JAWS to enable you to read web pages with JAWS. So in Gmail, and I don't know, maybe you're talking just in general, but in Gmail, if you're going to use these keyboard commands, you're going to turn the virtual PC cursor off. If you're going to read something that's on that web page, like uh, an email or settings, then you want to turn it on. 
hope that answers that for you. Um, and it is a little confusing. I, I do understand, you know, how that can be confusing, especially for new students. And I want to go back to also the question about the, the virtual PC cursor settings. I think as far as it not speaking as much, you're going to go in, you're going to go into your settings and change verbosity. So type in verbosity. And if you have it set to the highest level level of verbosity where it says the least, then you're going to get less spoken on the screen. There are settings for that. So do insert six on the number row and then um, type in verbosity to get to those settings. Great. Well, we had a number of questions come in uh, as you were answering some of those first <laughs> questions. So just to be aware of the time, we've sure. got about 45 minutes left in the webinar, so we can take some questions now uh, and, and field those or move sure. on. It's your let's, preference. Let's take a couple more. The, the next few tasks are rather short. Great. So yeah. Let's... Um, so first question. The list of labels didn't seem to have an outbox or draft folders. Is that something you have to reveal in some other way? That's a really good question. Let me go over here and let's, if I go to G then L to go to the labels list and I type in draft, yes, there is a draft. I don't know, I'm sure there's a way to uh, enable those where you can see them. But if you type it in, if you do G, then L, and then you can just search for it. You can type in draft or you can type in um, outbox. Let's see if out, that would probably help if I typed it correctly here. Um, Yeah, I'm not seeing an outbox, but maybe it does. Maybe maybe they call it something else. That's a really good question. Um, yeah, so I would try going to, to pressing G then L and then typing draft or if you type outbox, it doesn't come up with that, but it says more results. And if I go there, then it doesn't really give me an outbox. So perhaps they call it something else. That's a really good question. Great. Um, another question. I use Gmail in standard view. I use tabs for the inbox with primary social updates and forums. Is that the way to use it or can I use inboxes from the settings? You know, I've not ever done that. I'll have to try that. I, I would think that you can do it that way. Um, if that's how you prefer, you know, if it's organized that way, but yeah, that's something I would need to dig into and try. I haven't tried that. Yeah, if you wanna send an email to training at vispero.com and tell me how you use it, just explain how you use it, then we'll look that up and work with that. All right, I dropped that email in the chat as well. Great. And so we'll do, um, one final question and then we'll move on and I'll save any other questions that come in for the next time we pause. Okay. When working in Gmail calendar or calendar, auto population is not always read. So that is difficult to confirm. For example, a message recipient might be read, but it cannot be confirmed with JAWS. Is there a grand secret to confirm what has been auto populated? Ah, that's another one I don't know the answer to. I do know that when by default, for example, if I start typing in an email address and it's sent to that before, it'll add that and it will read that when I press the tab key. Um, much like Outlook does, you know, you can type something in Outlook and if you tab, then it accepts whatever that auto fill you know, thing is, that may not be what you're asking. Once again, send me an email and I'll check into that because I haven't, I haven't changed any of those settings. So uh, there may be some commands for that. All right, well, I can go back to screen sharing and okay. we can move forward with the PowerPoint. Okay. So we're gonna talk about composing and sending messages. Um, so when you compose a message, you're going to use, once again, those Google keyboard commands. And you're going to do it with a virtual PC cursor 
turned off. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen and I'll just show you how to do this. Great. And this one's a really quick, quick one. So um, let me share my sound here. Meeting control. Task switching. Gmail inbox six. And here we're back. PC. All right. Can you guys hear and see that? Yes. Okay. Great. All right. So I like to I always like to press G then I to make sure I'm in my selected. Inbox. Okay. Just told me none selected. I can press insert T though. Title is inbox six strainers ten at gmail.com. All right. So I have my virtual PC cursor off. And I'm going to press the letter C to compose a message. Compose, new message dialog, new message region, to edit combo. All right, so it brings up the compose dialog much like you would find in another uh, app, desktop application for like Outlook or another email client. So here's where we're going to type in who the message is to. So I'm going to, I'm going to send it to my Vespero email. Seven. At uoticurrentvispero.com, one of one. And it found that, so I'm going to press tab. Compose, draft, save dialog, new message region, to edit combo, add it uoticurrentvispero.com. All right, and it told me it added that, so I'm going to tab again. Subject edit. And I'll type a subject, uh, I don't know, test. T it's awfully boring, but it works. All right, so I'll tab again. And if I want to read this, because like I said, I have mine set to uh, reading uh, words instead of each character, but I can press insert up arrow. If you're using a laptop and you have it in laptop layout, keyboard layout, you press caps lock up arrow. Subject edit test email. All right, I'll tab. Message body edit. And now I could type in this the, is a the, test. A, test period space I and sending. It during a webinar on using G with G in a standard view. Enter. All right. So now I can read that email like I do a document. This is a test. I am sending it during a webinar on using Gmail with JAWS in standard view blank. And this is where I say this is, this is kind of similar to using the Google Workspace applications because the virtual PC cursor is off. We're using the PC cursor and you're navigating it just like you would a document. All right, I'm gonna show you a really quick way to send it, but before we do that, I wanna just show you a couple of other things. So if you want to include the CC field, the carbon copy field, you can do that with Control Shift C. Control Shift C, CC edit combo. And it placed you right in that field. So if I wanted to copy somebody else, I could. If you wanna do the blind carbon copy where you send a message and your recipients don't see the, the people who are in this field, but they the people who you whose email addresses you place in this field, it, they do receive your message. You can press Control Shift B. Control Shift B. B C C edit combo. All right, so it places you once again in that field. So you can tab from here. Subject edit. Test. So we have two. We have C C then B C C, then subject. Message body edit. Message. Send Control Enter button. Now it said Control. It said send. Control enter button. And I want to tell you something about this. That is the command that you can use to send. But if you do it while you're sitting on this button, for some reason, it doesn't work. So just wanted to let you know about that. More send options button menu. This gives you more send options. For example, you could press space and you'd have a menu that one of the options there, it might be the only one, is that you can schedule a message. So you can schedule what time you want to send that message. Attach files toggle button has pop up. If you press the space bar here, it accesses your computer and allows you to choose files to attach, just like you would in any other program. Insert link control K toggle button has pop up. A insert link control. And here you can insert link. Insert emoji control. You can insert, uh, insert emojis. Insert files using drive toggle button. Files using Google Drive. Insert photo toggle button. Photos. Turn confidential mode on. Insert signature toggle. So you just have a lot of different options here. And there's one I do want to show you. More options. Discard draft control shift D button. If you want to discard the draft, if you think, no, I don't really want to send this right now, 
I now I couldn't get that keyboard command to work earlier. I don't know if, if anybody's actually used it. Control Shift D. Discard draft control shift D button. However, you can press space here to discard the draft. All right. So I just wanted to show you what your other options were. I'm going to shift tab back up to the message field several in, times. Insert in attack more send message body edit. All right. So I'm in the message body. I've just typed my message and now I want to send it. I can do that by pressing control enter. Control enter sending dot 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 sending dot 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 cancel. And let's press insert T. Message sent. Oh, it sent message, sent message. Okay. So it sent the message. If I press insert T. Title is inbox six strainers 10 at gmail.com. I'm back in my inbox. So that is how you compose and send a message. Meeting controls. Here and Meeting alt S. Do we want to take a couple more questions or do we want to move on to the next? Let's launch a poll and oh, while right. we're. And while we're getting those responses, we can answer a few questions that okay, came great. in and review a few that we uh, skipped over earlier. Okay, yeah, we just have a couple more things to uh, to go over here, so really quickly. Okay, all right, guys. And so we can put this poll up. And the question is, which keyboard command is used to compose a message? Is it C, Control plus C, Alt plus C, or JAWS key plus C. To compose a message, what do you use? C, Control C, Alt C, JAWS key plus C. All right, and while folks are responding to that poll question, had a few uh, other questions that came sure. into the chat. Okay. Uh, so how do you insert a link? Do you just use Control C and V or does the inserter link do something special? Oh, that's a good question, let me go to compose a message here and let's find out. Um, if I go to insert link, it, here it says control K, uh, but you just gave a different command. So they're probably, you know, different ways of doing it. Control K I think would work. And if you press space though, it says edit link and then you could paste your URL or type it in and then press enter. Great. Um, another question that came in, having never used Gmail shortcuts before, do they ever conflict with JAWS keyboard commands? That is an excellent, excellent question. So if you turn off the virtual PC cursor, then the answer to that is no. If you were to leave the virtual PC cursor on, there is a way to get around that, but I don't, I mean, I'm not... I think it's easier not to. I mean, you can, there's a bypass command. So for example, if you were to press the letter G on when the virtual PC cursor is on, JAWS is gonna try to, or it's gonna navigate to any graphics on that page. You can bypass that with insert three on the number row and then press the keyboard command, but it's just easier if you turn the virtual PC cursor off, then you can use those keyboard commands without worrying about them conflicting. Great. And one uh, question that we skipped by earlier, are attachments easy to manage? I cheat and use Outlook to manage them. Um, in terms of managing, do you mean, I think attaching and then opening them? Pretty, pretty much, you know, you can tab through there. It'll tell you if you have attachments and you can enter to open them. And the same with attaching. If you tab to that place where it said attach files and you press space, then you can just go choose the attachment. So it is very similar to using Outlook. Great. Well, those are the questions that came okay. in and looks like we've had about 37% participate in our chat. Right. So we'll go ahead and wrap that up. Which keyboard command is used to compose a message? We had four options. 55% said just the letter C. 34% said control plus C. 7% said alt plus C. And 7% says JAWS key plus C. Uh, Elizabeth, which one was the correct response? C. All right, yes. so I'm gonna end that poll and we'll head back into our PowerPoint. Okay, all right, we're gonna talk next about 
And this is one of those questions somebody had earlier about replying. So we're gonna talk about opening, reading, and replying to messages. So, uh, and I know I, I keep saying this, but once again, you, you, you can do this with your virtual PC cursor turned off. And you're gonna press enter on a message just like you would in Outlook. The difference here is you're going to turn on the virtual PC cursor to read it because what you have is being displayed on a web page. So you need to turn that virtual PC cursor on to read it. And then you can turn the virtual PC cursor off to close the message, to reply to the message, to forward it or whatever, and then go back to your inbox. So I am going to share the screen once again and show you how to do that. All right, so let's share JAWS and meeting screen. All right, so I'm G inbox six. All right, so I'm here in the inbox. And once again, I can verify that with insert T. Title is inbox six strainers 10 at gmail.com. All right, so I can navigate these messages with my arrow keys. Main region, primary tab panel, unread. Oh, wait. PC. Card. Okay, I had to make sure I actually turned that off. Unread, Elizabeth Whitaker, FW, NFB 21 film screening. All right, so I know I have a message down here that I want to read. I can down arrow. Uh, uh, Google community, unread, me, Elizabeth 2, test, 8.59 a.m. All right, so if you've replied to something, Google will say from me. It always does that. That's kind of one of those funny things uh, about Google. But if it says from me, then you've either sent that message or you've replied to it or something like that. So if I want to read this, I can press enter. Enter, main region, test. All right, so now the message is open. I can verify that with insert T. Title is test strainers 10 at gmail.com. All right, so it tells me the subject of the message. Now I'm, because I'm going to turn on the virtual PC cursor to read it. Because if I were to down arrow here, up and down arrow, nothing happens. We don't get any feedback. All right, so insert Z. Use virtual PC cursor on. So now we have the message. And if I press the letter H for heading. Elizabeth Whitaker heading level three. And it's, you know, it said my name there. 8.59 a.m. three hours ago. And it says the time. Not star checkbox, not reply button. More button menu, call to me. So you have some options here. You could reply right there. I'm not gonna do that, but you can. Show details button menu, reply more. I am replying to this test message. All right, so that was my reply. From FS Trainers 10 Vispero. Send mail link trainers10 at gmail.com. Sent Tuesday, August 24th. So I sent that to myself. I replied to it. I could just read that message from here. And then when I'm finished, if I want to reply, I can press insert Z to turn off the virtual PC cursor. Use virtual PC cursor off. And I can press the letter R by itself. R is reply, A is reply all, F is forward. Now, if you want to do these things in a separate window, you can add shift to those. So if you want to reply in a separate window, it's shift R, uh, shift A for reply all and shift F as in Frank for forward. And you just have to remember that you have that separate window open. I'm just going to press R. List with two items. Elizabeth Whitaker, 8.59 a.m. three hours ago. Not start reply more to me. Show details. I am replying to show trim content button. Message body edit. All right. So it said message body edit. That's where it places me as my message body. Now, going back to that question that uh, was asked just a few minutes ago, if I want to get to the subject, I can press shift tab. To edit combo. Message body. Send control. I should be able to. To, to select contact. Type of response oh, button. That's a great question. Maybe that's why you asked that question. Selected. Mail. I would think. Main. To select contacts link. To edit combo. Message body edit. I'm going to try something here. This is just an Control idea. shift S. No. To edit. Message body. All right. That is a really good question. Um, blank. Show trim can blank. I don't know. Uh, but I can. Let's see. I could type a reply here. I am. Message, period, enter. I am replying to this message. All right, so if I tab, send control enter button, we have all these, you know, send control enter, more send options button, 
Attach files toggle button. So we have the same things that we had before. Insert link control. I'm going to shift tab again T here. Type selected. I want to Mail know. View site information. Address and test strainers 10 at gmail.com. G to select contacts link. To edit combo. Message body edit. Yeah, I would imagine there is a way to show, and I'll, I'll look this up while we're answering questions. I would imagine there's a way to show that subject so that you can change it. All right, but I have tab. Or, I mean, I've typed in my message and I can press control enter. Control enter. Sending dot dot dot. And it will send my message. It'll send that reply. Um, message sent. All right. So once I do that, now I press insert T. Title is test strainers 10 at gmail.com. And I am in the message that I just read. If I want to go back to the inbox. So we know we have this keyboard command G followed by I that will take us back to the inbox. But if you use that command, it's going to put you at the top of your inbox. So if you want to go back to your message list and, and be in the same place as you were just before you read that message, you can press alt left arrow back main region, primary tab panel. And then here we are Google can me and we're on that same message. All right, so let's take another question. We got one more task meeting controls. Let's take another you want to Throw this poll question yeah, out there. I keep forgetting about those. I'm so sorry. Yes. No let's problem. Do let's do that. All right, Betsy, and you can launch that for us. Question is when navigating your message list and email, the JAWS virtual PC cursor must be turned off. True or false? When navigating your message list and email, the JAWS virtual PC cursor must be turned off. True or false? All right. And we did. Did we have any questions come in? No, I think we are all up to date on our questions so far. Um, make sure you're referring to the handout uh, for, for any of those keystrokes. I can post the link to that again to make sure that everybody's got um, access to that handout. All right, I think I have an answer to that question. And here in just a few minutes, let me try this and I will I will demonstrate this because this is really interesting. Um, All right, I've stopped screen sharing if you want to share. Okay. Um, so apparently, it now the instructions I saw, I I'm trying to figure out the keyboard command for this. This may be one that you need to email to training at vispero.com and I will get you an answer. But there's supposed to be a drop down that you can access that allows you to edit the subject. So, um, yeah, this is interesting. So I don't quite have an answer for you yet, but uh, I will get an answer. So if you want to email training at vispero.com and just you know let me know that you have the question and I will get that answer to you because that's interesting. All right. Well, we had 42% uh, participate in our poll for the question, when navigating your message list in email, the JAWS virtual PC cursor must be turned off. Uh, this was a true or false question. 59% said true and 41% said false. Elizabeth, what was the correct response? Okay, I'm sorry. Say that one more time. I just totally was, Jaws was yammering and no worries. Sorry. So I'm concentrating on this question here. I want to answer it. Okay. When navigating your message list in email, the Jaws yeah. virtual PC cursor must be turned off. 60% said true, 40% yes. said false. That is true. Okay. I want to make sure I was answering the right question. Sorry about that. I do have an answer for the other question now. Yes, the virtual PC cursor. I would recommend turning it off, let me put it that way, because it's just a whole lot easier to navigate there. Great. 
All right. Well, are we uh, heading back to the PowerPoint or yeah. continuing? All right. Let Let's me head get... back to the PowerPoint and then I will show you. I just figured out the edit subject. Um, and I apologize for that, guys. I was Jaws was yammering and no worries. All right. So we're back on archive, delete and search for messages. All right. So archiving is a really neat thing to do. Archiving messages actually removes them from your inbox, but it doesn't delete them. It puts them in the all mail folder. And of course you can move messages around wherever you want them, but it's just kind of a neat thing to do if you want to clear out your inbox, you just kind of get some messages out of the way. And maybe you're not quite sure if you want to keep them or you want to go back to them, they'll, they'll be in your all mail folder. Deleting a message sends it to trash where you can then go in and, and delete it. And of course you can use the search feature. If you're looking for a message, no matter where it is, you can use the search feature for that. So like I said, archiving a message places it in all mail and you can go to your trash to permanently delete a message. So I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and share my screen here and show you guys how to do this. Make sure we got JAWS here. All right. So. GFW, reminder, escape. Let me. Escape. Skip to content list using. Uh, Title is FW, reminder. All right. I want to. Main region, primary right. tab panel, so, grid. I really like. Title is inbox. Having this G followed by I get you to your inbox because it just allows you to quickly go back there. All right, so if I have a message and I want to archive it. Unread, Elizabeth, un, unread, unread. Down arrow here. Me, Elizabeth, Google community tab. All right, so I have a message here from Google. Let's say I wanna archive this message. I can do that with the letter E, echo. Um, no con. But first I need to select it. So this is another feature I really like. If you're on a message and you want to archive it or delete it, you can press the letter X. None selected. None select EXX. Uh, me, okay. Google. All right, let me try that again. None selected. Interesting. X, me, Elizabeth. Can I not archive that? None selected. X, selected, Google. Oh, okay. I don't know why it's saying none selected. What it should be saying is selected. And then it should say, if you press X again, it should deselect it. However, if you're arrowing around here, if I up arrow. Selected, me. It tells me that message is selected. Selected Google community tab. So now if I press E. Unread Elizabeth. It will take those messages and send them e. both to all mail. It will archive them. Unread, unread Elizabeth. All right. Now, if I want to delete a message, once again, I can select. I can select as many as I want, but I can press X. None selected. And I don't know why it's saying that, but I can press insert. Let's see, press selected, unread. All right, so insert up arrow just told me it was selected. I don't know why it's reading that way because it's worked every other time I've used it, but um, insert up arrow told me it was selected. Now I can press the number sign, which is shift of the three on the number row. Number, unread, Elizabeth. So that sends it to the trash. All right, so let's go to all mail by pressing G then A. Main region, grid. And from here, we can use our arrow keys. It's going to show us all our mail Go, here. Me, me, Elizabeth three, me, test email, Elizabeth Whitaker, unread, Elizabeth Whitaker, unread, Elizabeth. So we have all the mail here and we could find that message, those messages we archive. If I, all right, so if I want to go to trash, this is one of those folders that doesn't show up in the labels list, just like the draft folder. But if I press G then L, list with seven items it took me to the labels list and now i can type trash Lab label and press enter enter all mail strainers 10 at gmail.com gmail all right it read all mail but i think it went to trash let's see insert t title is trash strainers 10 at gmail.com so what happens there if you hear jaws read things like that it just hasn't caught up yet with what's happening on the screen that's that's what happens so now we're in trash. We could do a number of things. We could delete messages separately. Content in main region, grid, Let's see. Un unread, Elizabeth Whitaker. All right, so we have one message there. So it, it's there. And you don't actually have to select 
a message to delete it. You do if you're going to if you're going to delete it and move it to trash or if you're going to archive it, you do you press X to select and X to deselect. But you don't have to do that if it's in the trash and you want to just remove that message. You can press Shift F10 or the Applications key. Applications. You can down arrow. One select. Reply. Forward. Forward. Move to inbox. Delete forever. So you have options here. You have move to inbox. So if you if you accidentally put it in the trash, didn't mean to, you can move it back to the inbox, or you could press Enter on Delete forever. I'm going to press Escape though because I want to show you another option. Escape. Leaving menus. So I'm going to Shift Tab. Hide side pa side panel content info program D side pa hides. Toolbar, view side, trash uh, strainers, no. side panel, complementary region, content in program policy, privacy, terms, link, zero gig, it's main region, grid, details. All link. right, there's an actual option for empty trash. So I'm side, wondering if it's not giving me that because I only hides, have one thing in there. Toolbar, view side, side. All right, but I could send that to keep tab, to calendar tab, get it. Wow, how did I wind up here? All right, so let me go back to the inbox. Main region. Prime. And I'm just going to pick G. another Unread. message and we're going to send it None so to the deleted items here. We're going to press number X, number, unread, and go back to trash. List with enter, main, unread, Elizabeth, with unread, Elizabeth, empty trash now. Ah, button. All right, so what happened was I only had one message there and it wasn't showing that to me. Um, so if I shift tab, it says empty trash now. So I can delete them all at once. I can press space. Space. Confirm. I can tab here to OK. Close. OK button. Space. Space. Main region. Empty trash now button. All messages have been deleted. And it's gone. So that is how you empty the trash. Now quickly, let's go back over here to the inbox. Main region. Primary. And let's reply to a message. G. Unread. Elizabeth. I hit R. R. Unread. Okay, that took a minute. Unread. Uh, Elizabeth. Oh, Enter. I didn't select the message. That's what happened. In list with one items. Elis All right. So here, if I shift tab to edit combo to select contacts, type of response button menu. Here we have something that says type a response button menu. If I so what I did is I pressed R for reply. I'm in the message field. I shift tab up to this type a response button menu and I press space space expanded. And if I down arrow. Menu, reply, reply, forward, forward, edit subject. Edit subject, enter. Enter. Leaving menus, type of response button menu. Elizabeth Whitaker 1047A, message button, subject edit. Now we have the subject field here and we could edit that and then type the message and send it. So that is how you edit a subject in a reply. That was a great question. Thank you for asking that. Meeting, con Gmail. All right, meeting I'm gonna stop meeting sharing. And I think we have another poll question, right? We yes. do. Oh, I let's, remember this time. Let's, <laughs> excellent. Yeah, we'll launch our last poll question. And then we've had tons of questions come in. All right. Uh, and if you guys, if I don't get to your question today, you can always send an email to training at Vespero.com. All right. So which keyboard command? Actually, have we discussed search yet? Oh, whoops. Hang on. Well, this can be a pre-reading question, so we can go ahead right. and answer this poll while we look I'm at uh, some a thousand of the today, questions, right. and then and then we'll answer that for you. So going back to some of the questions that uh, we have not uh, answered yet, um, after you selected the message that you wanted to delete, what did you push to put it in trash? The number sign, which is shift of the three on the number row. Great. Um, perhaps I missed it, but if I'm somewhere else on the screen, then want to go into a list of messages, how do I get there with the PC cursor off? Uh, okay. I, and I'm, do you mean with the virtual PC cursor off? I think maybe. I, I assume. So if you want to go to your inbox, you press G then I. If you want to go to your sent items, you press G then T. And um, if you want to go to all mail, it's G then A. I like that. I love being able to do that because it gets you back there very quickly. So yeah, if you're in, no matter where you are, you just want to go to your inbox, press G followed by I fairly quickly. 
Thank you. Uh, we had a, a, a question come in earlier. Um, what do you think the benefits are of using Gmail in standard view rather than in basic view? In some ways, it seems clunky. Yeah, you know, it really depends on what you want access to. And keep in mind, you can switch between the two at any time. So, you know, if you're working in, in a standard view and you want to switch over to basic, you can do that. Um, and I'm just speaking here. This is just my I don't have any information here about this. I'm just my personal opinion. I don't know how much longer we're going to have access to basic HTML view. Um, so that's another reason kind of mm. to move toward standard view. But yeah, it, it can be. And it's confusing with turning on the virtual PC cursor and off. But the more you practice it and the more you learn those navigation, like how to navigate the web and what all those cursors mean, then um, you know it'll be a lot easier. Gotcha. That's a great reason. <laughs> yeah. If, if we might not have it much longer. Um, and another question. I find it very confusing when I get to a long thread of messages. I worry that I may accidentally reply to a different message in the thread than I intend. When you press R to reply, does it reply to the most recent message in the string or to the one your cursor is on or if you are reading through the thread? Um, it will reply, like if you press enter on a message, then you turn on your uh, virtual PC cursor and you read those message, the, the string of messages, it's going to reply to the most recent one. Great. Thank you. Um, and one final question before we, we take a look at search. Why wouldn't I just import all my Gmail into Outlook and read them there? What would I lose? Ah, see, that's a great question too. You can definitely do that. Uh, Gmail, using it on the web, the, the webmail gives you the opportunity to access it from anywhere you are and gives you access to those Google apps. So if you're using those Google apps, it's a great way to flip back and forth between an app and, and your Gmail. Uh, but, you know, if you prefer using it in Outlook or any other provider or not provider, but client, you can definitely do that. All right. Well, we've had uh, just 28 percent participate in this poll. Uh, we'll go ahead and share the results so that we okay. can take a look from this pre-reading question. Yeah. Sorry about that. Which keyboard command activate search? So again, we haven't gone over this. So this is your best guess. Right. Uh, from the options of backslash, forward slash, control plus forward slash, and grave accent, your options, uh, we had 59% say forward slash, 27% say control plus forward slash, and 13 who said backslash. So what is the correct response? You guys are great. It is forward slash, although I can understand why you thought it was control slash because and, and backslash as well. So uh, Google does use a lot of different commands, but it's forward slash to get to search. Great. Thank you. And I can go ahead and demonstrate that. Are we ready to do All that? All right. I will stop share and hand it back over. All right. I got so excited about the reply subject thing that I just completely forgot that I had not actually shown this yet. All right. So meeting control task switching FW save. All right. I want to compose re. Oh, I have to get out of this compose more attach insert 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 turn conf insert more off. discard draft space draft. All right. I want to discard that draft. Main okay, region, so primary. I'm here in title is inbox my inbox and I want to search for a message. So I'm going to press slash slash banner region search. Re and I'm going to type in Google because I know I have a message in my all mail folder that I archived from Google. So I'm going to type in Google. And hit enter Google enter main region grid Google community tab strainers 10 finish setting up your new Google account. Ah, so. Here we go. It found that message and there's only one there. Google community tab. And I can press insert up arrow to verify that. And if I wanted to read that, I could press enter. And you know, if I wanted to delete it, I could press uh, number sign or whatever. And then if I want to go back to my inbox, I can press G then I. Main region, 
primary tab title is inbox. And we're back in the inbox. That is how you use search. Task switching. Meet all tasks. All right. What other questions do we have? All right. Um, a question to come in right after our, our search poll. Can you use the X key to select non-contiguous messages in the trash? Yes, you can. You definitely can. Um, now, in the trash, you don't have to, but you can, though. You can select them, and you can then delete them, uh, delete forever, yes. And you can do that in your inbox and other folders as well, other labels as well. All right. Well, that was the only question uh, that we missed. We had a okay. few kudos to you, Elizabeth, <laughs> that we're glad this session is being recorded and we could send an email for assistance. And lots of kudos to you as an excellent instructor, because this is some tricky content. Uh, so thank you so much for, thank you for your help for today. Sure. So I'm going to go back to sharing and we will look at our contact page and get through these final slides. If we've got uh, time at the end, we will answer any remaining questions that come in in the chat. All right, so let's look at what we've discovered today. So learning Gmail in standard view is going to help you gain tools and knowledge for using other Google platforms and services. It also gives you access to them right on the same page. Using standard view gives you access to all Gmail features. Um, obviously, you know, as someone said, you can use it in other ways, but Gmail has specific features that you only have access to if you do it this way. You can navigate Gmail and standard view using keyboard commands specified by Google. Standard view loads by default in newer browsers like Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge. So uh, when you open up Gmail, you're going to, uh, unless you have changed the setting permanently in the settings, uh, it, it's going to come up in standard view. And um, if you're like Liz and like me too, we do kind of switch back and forth depending on situations. So it doesn't mean you have to always stay in standard view, uh, but you know, as Elizabeth noted, there's always a chance Google takes away HTML view. So the quicker we get used to standard, the better off we're going to be. Uh, so let's talk about annual licenses for JAWS and Zoom text. We've talked about using the portal to get those. $90 for an annual student license for JAWS. $80 for an annual student license for Zoom text. And finally, something that's probably going to be of importance and uh, very important for us and something that, that you can do to help us. If you train or you support people who are blind or low vision or deaf blind with their access technology, it's important that we hear from you. We have a survey that is going to be up through September 1st. It's going to help us understand your learning needs and your continuing education needs. If you take this survey, it was developed with a partnership of organizations and all of them trying to improve outcomes for children, youth, and adults who are blind, have low vision, or are deaf blind. Included in the partnership, ATIA, ACVREP, VSA, us at APH, AER, and AOTA. So uh, the uh, survey, it's going to be very helpful for all of us. Please use the link that uh, Betsy Ann has provided. Uh, you may have, in other communications from APH, gotten information from us as well. Uh, same link. Please use that particular link and uh, answer that survey. Give us that information. That'll be very helpful to us. Absolutely. Do we have any other questions that have come in? We had a yes, we've got just two minutes to answer. Right. Um, I saw one about how to open a message. Yes, you press enter on the message. And then if you want to read it, you can turn on your virtual PC cursor with insert Z, read that message, and then turn off the virtual cursor again. And one about how to archive in basic HTML view. So in basic HTML view, you will select, you'll locate the message that you want to archive and check the box for that message. And then there's an archive button and that will archive your message. All right, I think we hit all of the uh, main 
questions that have come in. Again, if you've got a burning question that you need Elizabeth to answer, you can always send an email to training at vispero.com. I'm going to go back real quick to our con the contact us slide, and I'm going to type in two links, freedomscientific.com forward slash training uh, has training resources for JAWS. You can, uh, it also lists on this slide, the training at vispero.com email address. So I want, just want to make sure everybody has access to those resources. Um, we're really grateful for our partners at Vispero who make uh, such excellent resources, not only for their own page, but also share those resources with APH. So as always, Elizabeth, thank you so much for diving deep with us into another JAWS topic. Sure. Thank you guys for having me. Thanks everyone for your great questions and all your participation and suggestions.